butchering our meat rabbits right now. We like to save the ears. We dehydrate them for dog treats and the tails. Make fancy little keychains to set a grow out. You know, you always procrastinating, and one of the biggest procrastinations was butchering the rabbits. So I'm just going by and taking the tails, taking the ears, process those later. Now, normally we do keychains with the rabbit's feet. We process the hides. We have a large stock of keychains right now. And we have a bunch of hides in the freezer today. Be a good winter time project. Our humidity is so high down here. So trying to trying to dry hides is a little tricky at this time of the year. Um, we don't like to waste, so most of the waste on here will go to the pigs. They'll love it. Um, fortunately, we're not going to save any of the hides from these because we have so many in the freezer. But all the internals, they'll go and we'll feed the pigs with them. But uh, right now, the, ta the tails and the ears, we're going to process. We're going to make keychains with the tails. And the ears will be dehydrated and we'll feed them the spark, our dog. Here we are. We have our rabbits hanging. If you notice that the fur is wet, we soak them in an ice bath and it kind of keeps the fur off of the meat mostly. We hang them because if you try to do it flat on a table, you end up with a lot of hair in your meat. And I find it's easier to just do it like this. It's faster, it's more productive. I mean, it's no wrong way to do it. Kind of whatever your personal preference is ultimate goal is just to have meat in the pot so this is the method I choose basically just you start off cutting around the legs and with a little effort you pull the skin down you want to be careful to not stab yourself with a sharp knife you could use garden gloves if you, if you want something, you know, welding gloves. I definitely say on a homesteading scale, one to 10. Rabbits are probably up there on processing if you've never done it before. The meat is beneficial. It's not as easy as to clean like a chicken or a quail, stuff like that, but it's a good meat source. So, to touch back on the homesteading and, and rabbits, it's definitely a good cost effective meat source. It's really not expensive to feed, and you can get a lot of meat from them a year definitely breed it. It gets a little hot during the summertime here in South Louisiana, but you could definitely get a few litters a year and let them grow out and end up with a good bit of meat. Lucas is working on one himself. He decided he wanted to save the pelt on this guy. So he's going to be a little more careful about his butchering. That way he can save it and process it once it cools off. You always see our six-year-old. But Lucas has been doing this absolutely as long as I can remember. Hunting, fishing, cleaning. Cause we always taught if you go hunting for something and you kill it you have to eat it so he, he learned very young all right guys so I'll show you how to open up the stomach scissors are pretty easy at this point i cut in a small incision here and i just cut down and everything kind of just falls out 
This is where you exit if you have a weak stomach. Take care not to bust the insides. You end up with a giant mess. Again, we're not saving any of the internal organs because we're going to feed them to the pigs. What parts can you save if you want to save? You have, like any other mammal, you have livers and hearts. Hearts you could feed them to your dogs, you can eat them. You have kidneys, really. I don't see the benefit of a kidney. That's my personal preference, but. Livers? Livers. You can cook livers down, livers are good. Maybe you could write us a cookbook one day. Maybe you could write a cookbook, because I'm not the chef here. <laughs> I'll write a cookbook. You gonna write a cookbook? So we're going to finish up here and then we'll get the deboning because these rabbits we have planned to make rabbit sausage and rabbit ground meat with. So we'll finish up with that off camera.